India's missile launch could affect the global arms race. I discussed the implications with Joseph Cirincioni. India launched its first successful anti-satellite missile on Wednesday. In his announcement, Prime Minister Narendra Modi called it an unprecedented achievement. The satellite was destroyed in low Earth orbit. India tested it in the lower atmosphere to avoid leaving debris in space. This makes India the fourth country to carry out this kind of test. The United States, Russia and China have conducted similar tests. The timing of the announcement is controversial in India, where general elections start next month. Opposition leaders say the prime minister is trying to build his political clout prior to the vote. The move has also created criticism and concern about the possibility of weaponizing space. One critic, not surprisingly, is India's neighbor Pakistan. The two nuclear powers most recently clashed just over a month ago in Kashmir, which is controlled by both countries. The rivaling nations have fought over the disputed region since the late 1940s. Pakistan's foreign affairs ministry addressed international space laws in a statement, saying, Space is the common heritage of mankind, and every nation has the responsibility to avoid actions which can lead to the militarization of this. India's missile launch could affect the global arms race. I discussed the implications with Joseph Cirincioni, a former director for non-proliferation at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. According to him, this launch sends a message to Russia, the United States, China, and the rest of the world. Right now, only the United States, Russia, China, France, and Britain have these kinds of missiles. India developing one puts pressure on China to increase its nuclear capabilities. It's this kind of arms control spiral you'd like to prevent. Do you believe, Joseph, that the United States should take the lead in nuclear disarmament? And not only do I think that, the President of the United States thinks it. The first foreign policy speech he gave in his presidency was in Prague in 2009, and he pledged to have the United States lead the world in reducing and eventually eliminating nuclear weapons. The biggest failure of the President's administration, in my view, is that he has not done this. We are still stuck with the Cold War arsenal. The United States has about 7,000 nuclear weapons. Russia has a similar stockpile. By comparison, China has about 200. Most of the other nations number their arsenals in that range, a couple of hundred weapons. The president has failed to, to make good on his pledge to reduce the nuclear dangers. He's got two more years. I personally am pushing the administration to make one last go at it. So as you know, Joseph, right now the United States overhauling its own nuclear program, uh, which some estimate could cost a trillion dollars over the next yeah. 30 years. What kind of message does this send? Why is he speaking out of both sides of his mouth? Yeah, you definitely have a big gap between the president's policy and the procurement going on by the Pentagon. The contracts for nuclear weapons are racing ahead. This budget is going to be the biggest ever. We're going to spend probably around $55 billion this year on nuclear weapons and related programs. The president has got to have his, reassert his policy to get a grip on this. Otherwise, we look like hypocrites. We say we're in favor of reducing nuclear dangers, but we're completely, we capitulate, we, we're redoing the entire Cold War arsenal with new bombers, new subs, new missiles, bringing these, these weapons well into the, uh, the middle of the 21st century. Joseph, what actually would be the catalyst to uh, starting a, an international dialogue with real results in yeah. the fight against um, disarmament? In my view, the President of the United States could jumpstart these discussions by announcing that he is going to do what his chiefs, his Joint Chiefs of Staff say he can do, dramatically reduce the existing U.S. arsenal. The military says that we can reduce our arsenal by one-third and still conduct all military missions. The president has wanted to do this with Russia. Russia reduces and we reduce. But Putin's not going to do that anytime soon. The president should take the lead, independently reduce the arsenal, set a standard for the world. In my view, that is the, a doable and dramatic gesture that could get talks moving in a much more positive direction. Joseph Serencione, thank you so much for your time and insight joining us from Los Angeles.